How's it going guys? Uh, today we're gonna go back and revisit the Titan 1 build. Um, what I'm gonna show you today is basically how to drain, flush, and clean the loop. Um, as well as I'm gonna go through the unboxing of all of the stuff that we're going to add to the Titan 1. Um, I don't have coolant for it quite yet, that is in transit. So I am hoping to have that when it comes time to actually rebuild this system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clear everything off the table except for the bowl, the drain tube, and the actual system. And then we'll go through and start cleaning it out. Alright, now that everything is off the table here, um, I wanted to put the, the system on an actual box. That way I could have, you know, a direct flow going from the drain port down to this bowl here. Um, you know, the first thing I would like to do to start with is I'm going to remove the graphics card just so that way it gives us a little more room to actually work inside this case. Um, since we will be cleaning all of the components, the motherboard's gonna have to come out anyways. Same with the graphics card and then the radiator, the tubing, just so that way we can do a proper cleaning of everything. So let me go ahead and start by getting the graphics card out and then we'll start draining this loop. All right, now that we got the graphics card out, that does expose the actual um, pump header right here, which is something that I want to disconnect. And I'll show you a reason why um, when it actually comes time to flushing the loop out. So what we're going to do is make sure that there's no power connected to the system whatsoever, just to avoid any issues. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove this little cap that's on the drain port here. Just like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to screw it into this little port here. Now that it's screwed in there, you're going to loosen up this one up here. As you can see, all the coolant that's inside the actual reservoir itself is going to start leaking down into the bowl. Uh, reason being for this is because there is a little spring mechanism in here, and when you actually tighten this onto it, It'll actually start the draining process, but you do have to remove the fill cap. So I'm going to let this thing drain out completely, and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that we got as much of it drained out as possible, there's other steps that you can do to try and drain more of it out. You can try, you know, tipping it, see if maybe you can get a little more coolant to come out. But as of right now, that should be plenty to actually start the flushing process. So what you're going to do now is you're going to put the fill cap back in just to put a little pressurize in the system. Then you're going to start by undoing this little tube here. A little coolant's going to come out. That's when we're going to take our shop rag and just clean that out. Just like that. All right, so now we're gonna put this cap back on to just kind of seal everything back up. 
All right. So the easiest way to flush all of this out is going to be with distilled water. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically fill it up completely with distilled water. And then you're going to pump it through the system, drain it, and then just keep repeating that cycle until the coolant or the distilled water is completely clear. Uh, once you do that, then we'll drain the whole system again, and then we'll start disassembling it. So I'm gonna put this on a time lapse of me going through and completely flushing the system out. That way you can see how it goes, and then we'll basically go from there. Before I start this time lapse, there's a couple tools that will actually aid in helping on doing this flushing. Uh, the first one that you're going to want to do use is you're going to use this pump switch 24 pin bypass connector. What this will allow you to do is turn on the pump without actually turning on the entire system. Now, if you're not like me and you have an extra power supply to do this with, um, all you got to do is you just have to disconnect this um, this little uh, 24 pin here to the motherboard. Disconnect it, plug this piece in, and let me open this up for you, that way you can see it. You'll plug this into the 24 pin connector, and it actually has two speeds. It has full speed and it has low speed. Um, we're going to use the full speed that way we can get the pump to cycle through at the fastest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this uh, little connector here that goes to the to the pump and I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to run it out the back to this power supply with the 24 pin cable and then that way we can just start flushing this system. Uh, hold on and we'll we'll get her going. All right, now that we got as much of the distilled water out of the radiator and the tubes and all of that by twisting and moving the system around, uh, what's left to do now is we are going to fill any spot that has a fitting for these tubes right here with any kind of shop towels or rags or things like that so we can start removing uh, these tubes. And for the towels, this way we don't get anything damaged. Um, you know, there is still coolant or distilled water left in here, but the nice thing about it is if we cap it all off, none of it should leak into the system and that way we can pull apart this system and actually get all of distilled water out. So I'm going to actually focus on lining everything with paper towels and getting these tubes off 
That way we can get the motherboard out. Alright, now that we got the tubes out, go ahead and use your paper towels and just kind of shove them in here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take little bits of paper towels and we are going to just stick them inside of this little fitting here. This way any water that leaks out goes into the fitting and not onto the actual motherboard itself. There we go. All right. Now that we got that all done, um, up next is getting this motherboard out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain as much of the fluid out of the reservoir as possible. This way I can get this motherboard out. All right, now that we got as much of the distilled water out of the reservoir here as you can see, it's all pretty much empty except for the little sections that's right here, but all of that we can get when, uh, when we actually go through and start uh, really cleaning this out. So all that's left to do on this system after we flushed it all out is you're just going to remove the motherboard, the radiator, the distro plate, you're gonna take them apart and you're just going to clean them all out with distilled water and then put it all back together making sure all your o-rings are completely sealed up and ready to go and then all you do is just put it back together make sure to reapply thermal paste onto your block and that way you can have proper thermal con conductivity so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do all of this cleaning off camera and then I will do the unboxing of the all the components. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna unbox to complete this entire Titan One is the actual GPU water block that goes to this system. It's actually a kit that comes with everything for the most part, unless you wanna add a second radiator, which we'll get to in a moment, um, to completely do a full water loop in Titan One. So inside of this kit that we have here, let's get the box open. You will of course get the GPU water block. Now this will work for the ASUS 3090 and 3080. Um, they do make different kits depending on which graphics card you're gonna run. If you're gonna run MSI, ASUS, EVGA, I believe they even have one for the Founders Edition. Uh, they do give you two supplied tubes. One is a straight tube and the other is a 90 degree bend tube. They give you fittings. They will give you these uh, dual O-ring compression. They give you two, three, four, four of those. They will give you a 45 degree angle, a adapter ring, then they also will give you one, two, three, four, five, six of the 90 degree angled fittings. Also in the box, you have your thermal pads as well as your screws and your Allen wrench. And that is it for this little section. Um, you will need to use 
let's see here. I don't believe it comes with pre-applied thermal paste on it already. So you will need to make sure to apply thermal paste to this water block. But that is the first item that we unbox today. Uh, let's get into the next one. Up next, we have the the uh, 360 millimeter radiator that matches the one inside the Titan One system. Uh, I want to run dual radiators in mine, um, so I will be using this radiator to do so. Let's go ahead and get it out of the box. That way you can see it. It is a solid black radiator and it only has the ports on one side up here. Inside the box as well, it will give you all the necessary screws to mount it to the case as well as mount fans to the radiator. Uh, anytime you're dealing with any new radiator, it doesn't matter the brand, you always want to make sure to flush out the radiator. Um, just so that way you can get any debris out of it that you can that may have been left over from manufacturing How you would do that is you'll pull these plugs that are in here or at least one of them You will fill this up with distilled water You will re-plug this right here uh, Don't make sure uh, make sure not to fill it completely up and then just give it a good shake that way you can shake all the debris out empty it and keep doing that until you have no more debris inside the radiator. Uh, this will ensure that your loop is not contaminated with any kind of debris, which can cause any kind of thermal performance. So I'm gonna get this back in the box and we'll move on to the next component. Up next, we have a three pack of the Bits Power Notos 120mm RGB fans. Um, these are the fans that you can find that come pre-installed inside the Titan 1. Uh, these I will mount to the radiator that I just unboxed. That way you guys can, can get those going. Um, but this will help us have nine fans inside the system so we can have optimal airflow in it. The last items on our list that I want to show you guys is additional fittings and tubing that you are going to need if you want to run a second radiator with this Titan 1. Um, as I stated with the GPU uh, kit, it only comes with tubing and fittings to just connect it to the distro plate on Titan 1, not to necessarily run a second radiator. So if you do want to run a second radiator like I'm going to do, you're going to want to make sure that you have additional tubing and additional fittings. Um, I've got four 90 degrees, and then I have um, six of the actual uh, dual O-ring compression fittings. This way I can run the entire loop. Um, I did also get a thing of dark blue dye this will go into the coolant, so that way I can make the coolant uh, not white, but actually kind of a bluish color. Um, the tubing that I got is 500 millimeters in length. That way we can get this going. It is an outward diameter of 16 millimeter, which matches the entire system. And this will be in the PETG tubing. So that's all that's left guys let me grab all of the components here and there we go this is going to complete this video if you guys have any questions, be sure to go ahead and drop them down in the comments and I will answer them the best that I can. Uh, but stay tuned because we're going to be doing the full custom loop on this build. Appreciate you guys.